do a brief intro. Why don't you give well, me a cue when we're ready? We're to rolling roll. right now. So we're rolling right now. Yep. All right. Mm. Well, I'm Bill, and that's uh, I'm Eric. That must be Eric. Yeah, that's me. And we are part of the Unguarded Moments podcast. We are the Unguarded Moments podcast. Well, yeah, we're part of it. And, uh, well, thanks for listening. Yeah, let's get thanks that out of the way for right now. Listening to us babble about music and the stuff that we love and the, the things about the Detroit music that we love. We got the first one in the bucket. So this is podcast number two. Yeah, Stick with us. It's going to be interesting. You guys can enjoy listening to us. We're going to have some fun. All right. So, Eric, um, you and I were talking uh, off screen here uh, about some of the first things that really made us love music. Yeah. So Bill and I were talking. And I'm like, Joe, what was the first concert? You saw, or you and heard, however you want to look at it. For me, that first concert, I was about 13 years old. I went with my brother, who's about four years older than me. And we went and saw the Moody Blues over at, uh, I'm pretty sure it was at Pine Knob. Mine was Aerosmith, Coba Hall, and I was also 13. So I remember my friend Brendan, his mom and dad dropped us off, so neither one of us could drive yet. Right. Dropped us off uh, at Coba Hall, and we went and saw the show. They came back and picked us up, and I remember... Uh, Smelling very weird things mm-hmm. when I was there. I wasn't quite sure what that what it was, but it definitely wasn't cigarettes. Yeah, well, you know, the same same <laughs> issue in the late Things 70s. that might be legal these days, I don't know. Whatever. Same issue in the late 70s with the Moody Blues. I'll right. I that much, right? Especially a pine knob in the open air. Oh, I bet. It's probably like a smoke screen over there. It was interesting. <laughs> so, um, we were talking, it's like, well, where did our first influence come from uh, that got us into... What into music, and neither one of us played. Bill plays a little bit of music, but poorly. yeah, very poorly. I, I, have, I haven't heard that. I haven't heard him play music, but I'm just gonna guess it's poor. But, and you never will. Yeah, I probably never will. <laughs> but uh, and I'm not gonna ask. But right. um, so we were just kind of talking and trying to figure out what really got us started and influenced us in music to listen to music and, and to kind of get into it. Because I've talked to some people in the past and throughout a lifetime and. They've said that, well, I don't really have a whole lot of interest in music. I just kind of listen to whatever's on the radio. But yeah, Bill and I, I think are a little bit different. I think we're we're both. Um, I, I, we, I, we don't understand those people. Yeah, we, we, we How truly don't. How could you don't. not love music? How could you not have a song playing in your head right now? Exactly. You know, it's just ridiculous. And, of course, now I have unguarded moments playing in my head. <laughs> unguarded moments playing in your head? Yeah, well, you know, because it's Starfish. Yes, I'm looking at, um, so where do we want to go with this? We're on our podcast too. Uh, we're looking to kind of expand on where we got our, our inspirations from. Um, I know that, uh, I used to hang out with a friend of mine, a couple doors down. Uh, we were young, probably, gosh, I don't know, 10, 11 years old. My buddy's, uh, brother would go to, go to work and, uh, I'd run over there and would sit in his room and, Pull out of his, pull out some albums, and a couple of the albums that I got hooked on was uh, Queen, Night of the Opera, and oh, uh, Ario Speedwagon, Nine Lives. I remember them like it was yesterday, and I can't really tell you why, but um, they were certainly two good albums, and we used to listen to to a lot, but those are two that stuck in my mind. Well, I remember when uh, Back in Black came out. I'm that old. Were you roller skating back then? I was roller skating back then. Oh my God, don't start with me on that. That was not where I was headed with that. But I remember sitting in my buddy Kevin's house in his basement, and he had uh, a hi-fi stereo. Mm. And he always had the bass set up way too high. Oh. It was just the weirdest thing. But we would listen to REO Speedwagon and ACDC Back in Black and Sticks. Welcome to Paradise. Grand Illusion was one of my Grand favorites. Illusion, yeah, those two. And, but those were the albums that we grew up on as kids. Yeah. But my first experience, which was probably one of the, I don't know, formative or whatever. Um, my brother was always a big Beatles fan. And he's four years older than I am. And so whatever he was doing was always the coolest thing because, you know, as a little boy at eight years old, you think your you know, 12-year-old brother is the coolest thing ever and uh bill's only got four fingers yeah as far as i can tell um he's got a thumb too but don't walk into this <laughs> um but he was a big beatles fan and 
I remember being in the basement with headphones on and cranking out the cassette tape of Please Please Me and playing drums with pencils, breaking pencils on the, on the, uh, the metal desk, the big old steel case metal desk that we had in the basement, which I think is still in my basement now at my current home, which is interesting. But, no, it's interesting to me, y'all don't care. Um, the, the whole thing was, is, is the Beatles were huge. And this was early 70s. Sure. And they had already broken up by the time I became a fan. And I'm like, really? This is, oh, it's too bad. These guys are great. And well, so here's another question. Here's a total side note to, has nothing to do with anything. Do you remember when John Lennon got shot? Um, I sure do. I sure do. What were you doing? God, that's a good question. Yeah. You know, I remember more when uh, Elvis died. Right. And I was across the street at an elementary school playing with my friend Jeff. I don't know what we were doing over there, but I remember we had a transistor radio. And it came over the radio. I mean, we were listening to AM, FM. I have no idea. Right. It said, uh, came over and said that Elvis had died. And I remember it was my birthday. Oh. And he died on my birthday. So, wow, August see, 16th, deep. 1977 to be exact. Well, see, I don't remember that, but... You don't have to. I, Leave the dates up to me, Bill. Yes, sir. But I, these are the things we want to talk about. We want to we want to hear from you people. We want to see the comments in the comments section. Oh, I remember this concert. Oh, I remember what I was doing when John Lennon got shot. I remember when Elvis died. I, You know, my mom was a great Elvis fan. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it could be Mel Torme. You know, could be when, Mel. How, what were you doing when Mel Torme died? Yeah, God, that's a good question. You know, and again, there's like 40,000 people out there in the world who are going, <laughs> who the hell is Mel, Mel Torme? I think we're all Mel Torme lovers. Yeah. Oop. You just set that down anyway. Yeah. It's my Perrier and juice drink. Yes, well, you know, if Perrier would like to sponsor us, we would be welcome. Yeah, we'd happily take their money from them. Absolutely. Um, and we will brag about whatever juice <laughs> some better equipment. Going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> better equipment, better this, better that, better studio, something. What's wrong with our studio? There's nothing wrong with our studio. Just kidding. Your living room is awesome. All <laughs> right. You know. We're um, about we're about twenty five miles. Uh I guess we're kinda northwest of Detroit broadcasting out of a condominium. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so um one of the other things we want to talk about this podcast is essentially, um, again, we want to hear your stuff. We want to hear your stories. What did you love about me? What what makes you tick? What makes you just go, oh, that was a great song? Um, but, you know, our podcast is essentially a fluid discussion between Eric and I about what we love about music. And that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah, what brings what brings people together? You know, what, what part of the music brings people together? Is it the DSO? Could be. It could be. I mean, the DSO is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, we should all support the DSO. Is there is there the some do. other part of Detroit music that you just, oh my gosh, if I could go see this band at this venue, that would be just great. Or, you know, there's this this um, uh, beer tent at this festival that this band would be great at. We want to hear those things. What band haven't you seen that you always wanted to see? Me? Yeah. You're what band me. have you missed? Was it Joy Division? Well, you didn't see Joy Division. I did. Well, Joy Division was before my time, really. Yeah. Um, it was before yours. It was before mine. Well, Joy Division was done in 1979. Just kidding. We're only a couple years apart. Yeah. Uh, Joy Division was done in 1979. Oh, were they? Yeah. Um, that's when the lead singer offed himself. He offed himself, yeah. And, uh, I mean, the music is great. I love I, I, everything Joy Division put out on CD. I have. So if all bands were still playing, uh, no deaths, so to speak, or no breakups, what band would it be that you've never seen that you want to see? Mozart. Interesting. Didn't I think you were going to say that. I would love to see Mozart because I bet he would be a great show. It's interesting. Yeah, it, it gives me something but, to think about. Here's the thing. This is, again, I love 80s music. Yeah. I love, there's some 90s tunes, bands that are just phenomenal. But I... I had a classic upbringing. Yeah. You know who else I would love to see? Who? If I could see him? 
would be uh, Neil Diamond. My mom saw Neil Diamond years ago. He just had, a, again, a great show. Yeah. He, is, he was the Bruce Springsteen of that time frame. Or Barry Manilow, the king of jingles. Yeah, you know. The king of commercial jingles, whatever they call Barry's it. all right. <laughs> but again, it's, it's, it, it, it's what do you like. Sure. Um, and again, if, if I had the opportunity to see Mozart, I would jump at that. Now, but I can't, again, I can't compete with Mozart, but two that stick in my head is Led Zeppelin and Queen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Queen would be great. Um, too bad Freddie Mercury uh, isn't around, but uh, they stopped touring before I had a chance to see him. And mm -hmm. they, he was rated by Rolling Stone, one of the best front men ever. And uh, going back to um, Live Aid, when right. uh, he was up against U2 and Bowie and some mm -hmm. other people, they said he stole the show. Queen stole the show. Well, and I'll tell you this. Um, my son saw the Queen movie that just came out. Yeah. And he loved it. Thought it was great. Just phenomenal. And, um, you know, his marching band, the high school marching band that he's part of, is doing a Queen show this year. Oh, no kidding. It's just going to be great. I'm so excited to hear. Yeah. And, you know, that's another thing. I love a good marching band. I'm just a ball dork, and I just, just give me some music. And let me see the kids playing something. You know, and there's nothing I love more than somebody who can inspire the kids to love music. I'll tell you what, when I went to um, New York, I went there uh, 2002 after 9/11. Mm -hmm. We were there for March in March for the St. Patrick's Day parade. Oh yeah, and we were sitting there on um, I'm trying to remember what street it was. The street they come down um, doesn't matter, but um, we probably watched an hour of the of the parade. And the parade was probably two three hours long. I forgot how long, but we stood there for about an hour or so. And when the bagpipers came down, oh, and they're gosh. about. 30 or 40 wide by probably 100 long. They're all playing in unison. Oh, yeah. It's enough to make your hair climb on your skin and your skin crawl, and it's unbelievable sound. Well, something about music, something about that sound. It's just... It, and, and, and again, it, it, you're right with the bagpipes because that's an emotional dragging type instrument. It is. And I don't know what it is, but you know, I, I've been to a couple of police funerals and or state funerals for people that I've known. Yeah. And when the bagpipes come out, it's the, the tears just fire, start yeah. falling. I think it's part of our ancestry. I think it's built into our genes. There, there's something about that, you know, whiny, crying instrument that just gets you. Yeah, sure does. Um, it's amazing. You know, and here's another thing is, is that I'm also a, a pretty big fan of gospel. Yeah, yeah. Um, that has the same effect. Well, and for the longest time, my father and mom used to take us to uh, St. Elizabeth's downtown. Uh, Which you probably appreciate more than what you did when you were a kid. I do now, because there was a, uh, the, the choir. St. Elizabeth's, it, it, it's, it's an inner city. It, it doesn't exist anymore. They've closed that church. Yeah. Um, but... It's it's a Catholic, it was a Catholic church and it sort of had this gospel sort of uh, Baptist feel to it. Yeah. And the choir was forty people, fifty people, and they would it would take them ten minutes to. And if you, you can't see it now, but I'm kind of doing this. Bill's moving a little bit. I'm doing this little marching thing with my shoulders. Yeah. And they would just shuffle down the, the aisle and they'd be singing uh, you know, How Great Thou Art. But it wasn't that Mormon Tabernacle choir sound of that little, you know, white teenager boy, How Great Thou Art. It was this deep, rich, minor chord, you know, um, I've been a slave for 40 years and right. I'm singing how much I love the Lord, and blah, 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 blah. And it was this "How Great Thou Art" that just just brought it up from your your gut. And it oh was yeah. This feeling of like, holy from crap, the these people are just into it. Yeah. But there's a certain emotion that comes out with that. Sure. And music has that way. Yeah. 
I don't care if it's gospel. I don't care if it's punk or rap or or 80s tunes or, or classic Rolling Stones. There's something within the music that brings it out of you and says, wow, that's just a great song, and I'm so happy I'm hearing this. Yeah, unfortunately, I think we've gotten away from some of that, which is unfortunate. You yeah. Know? But, uh, There's a lot of... It's still there, but we're so... Everybody's so caught up on pop music and what the radio plays and your... It's, it's almost all marketing. Yeah. But where's the music that really brings out that feeling in your soul? Right. And again... I will consistently say this. It comes down to that local struggling band that just wants to play something that means something to them. Sure. And when it means something to the guys that are playing, and when it means something to the guys that are singing, that that gospel choir, that, that group walking down the aisle, it means something to them. It brings it out of you. Yeah. And there's just something to it. And that's what our show is about, is what does it mean to you? Sure. What is that song that just pulls it out of you? That just goes, oh my god, I'm so glad I heard yeah. that song. I couldn't live without ever hearing that song again. Right, right. I can listen to that 17 times in a row and still never get tired of it. it. Sure, whatever. You know, and it comes down to you and I were talking about this before. You know, there's that time where you hear that song the first time, and it's amazing, and it leaps into your skin. And Oh my gosh, this is just phenomenal. Yeah. But then the thirtieth time you hear it on the radio, what is it did, did it lose something? Yeah. What is that about the, the human psyche that it, it just goes away or is it that you are so accustomed to it? What is it? Yeah. It's funny as um not that it's a great song, it is a good song, but I was on spring break back in probably eighty eighty eight, eighty nine, eighty nine and um heard uh, Living Color, Cult of Personality. That's a good song. And that came, every time that comes on, it reminds me of driving down the beach of Daytona. Yeah. And it takes me right back, exactly right to that point, you know, and it's one of the songs that, Again, you know, in a snap, takes me right back. That's the thing, that's the, the thing about our show, is we want to take you back to that place that you first heard that song and that emotion that it brought out. Sure. That's something. And there's a song there for everybody. Yep. And what is that music? And maybe, just maybe, we can get you to have that song, another new one, because there's, again, I will say this until the day I kick, there's some really good music being made right now by the local Detroit bands. Yep. You and just got to get it out there. know how to pull it out, and they are singing about stuff that's important to them, and maybe there's something in there for you. Sure. And Maybe that might create the next memory for you. Yeah, and, you know, and that's the whole thing. What is our what is our tagline for unguarded moments? Music that makes, makes memories. The memories, right? Exactly. And, and going back to the church, this is where it all got started. Yeah, you know, not even a year ago, April, Bill and I had this uh, idea of a podcast, talk about music the way nobody else does. You know, and uh, promote local bands, pr- promote Detroit music, and how it affects us. Get people to love the stuff that we love. Yeah. And if you don't love it, don't listen to us. Yeah, you don't have to listen to us. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're pretty interesting. Bunch, bunch of old guys chatting about crap that nobody really cares about. But if you like it, feel free to like our page whenever we get whatever page we're going to get. We're getting there. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to be there. going, I don't know, mainstream soon. YouTube, Facebook, you Snapchat. We're going to be on all of them. Yeah. Who's Joe Rogan? Bark Cheese, whatever. I don't even know. Yeah, what I don't know what the name websites are anymore. Yeah, we'll be we'll be out there somewhere. Eric, <laughs> it's been a great evening. It certainly has, Bill. You think we should wrap it up? I think we should wrap it up. All right. Well, listen, this is uh, podcast number two. Unguarded moments. Unguarded moments. Let's hit our closing music here. Um, we have un- we have music to close Eventually. out. Yeah, eventually we'll, we'll we're, we're getting that to that point yeah, we'll edit that we're out. still kind of uh, working on this yeah, so um, listen for us we're going to be having podcast number 3 come out very shortly um, Unguarded Moments that is Bill and I am Eric and we'll be coming back to you shortly thanks for listening see ya bye